As Corona continues to take its toll on the entire world, I am Harish who is going to talk about when and how will Corona end exactly. So when will Corona end? It all comes to a basic question where the problem is. So the problem is that Corona is a novel virus. So what is a novel virus? Novel virus is a new virus. The human body has never felt that virus. It doesn't know how to react to that virus. So how does it contract the virus in the first place? This is this event is known as spillover event where humans contract it from other animals. In this case, humans might have contracted it from a bat which act as a reservoir. So what are the three problems with the new virus? First one, there's no immunity by the body. The body doesn't know how to react. The second one is there's no drugs. And third one is there's no vaccines. So now we have to act against these three problems. So let us check this problem one by one. So the first problem is, uh, is the obviously the drugs. So there are totally seven groups of antivirals. So this can be used in very various other diseases. The seven groups, I'll give you an example. So first example is acyclovir. This acyclovir was first developed in 1960 against herpes. So the development started in 1960. It was approved in 1972 and it came into the market in 1974. So it took nearly 12 years to come into the market, although the production years was around 4 years. So now, now let's come to another example, Ritonavir. Ritonavir is a famous ART that is used against HIV. It was first developed, started in development in 1996. It was approved in 1998 and it came into the market in 2000. So another drug which took 4 years to come into the market. Now we would come to the most famous drug and the drug which is related to the problem now. We will talk, talk about Oseltamivir which is the flu drug which was used against two epidemics. One is the H5N1 epidemic and the other one is the H1N1 epidemic. So this, this drug which was approved in 1998, it came into the market in 2002. Again, it took four years to come into the market. Now taking into account this, so let's say developing a drug takes four years. Now for the vaccines, Vax vaccines actually play the most important part of curing this viral pandemic. So let's see how a vaccine gets developed. It gets developed in two, three, two stages, preclinical and clinical stage. So preclinical, first one is to identify the antigen. Identify the antigen which is, can be used to develop the vaccine, then just to develop a plan. Third one is the most important part where we go into trial on animals. Fourth one, we just uh, recognize how to manufacture this. This might take around one year. Now we move on to the clinical phase where we have four phases. One, two, three and four. This would take around one year. So at minimum, developing a vaccine is going to take around. For example, let's take smallpox, which was developed by Edward Jenner in 1796. It took four years to develop. Next is polio, developed by Salk. It took four years to develop. So let's let's say the government fast tracks the development of a vaccine, but a vaccine at least takes two years to develop. Now we come to the final part which is the human immunity, the body immunity against this virus. So how does the body react against a virus entering it? First one is the natural killer cells, which are the T cells. Second one is the helper cells, which are again T cells. Third one is B cells, which produce IgM and IgG. Now this provides an immunity against the virus. This might take around two to three weeks to develop. So what is the most important part of it? There is development of some cells called memory cells and it occurs in 80% of all the acute patients. Now these memory cells are really important and interesting because they provide protection against any future attacks by the same virus. The virus's genome is imprinted in these cells. Now 20% of the people they don't tend to recover so fast. They tend to recover only slowly they develop serious symptoms. However, 3% of the patient, they are likely to die from this coronavirus. Now to an important topic that is known as herd immunity. 
So what is herd immunity? Herd immunity is the immunity shown by a group of individuals as a whole to this virus. So now this is the critical, 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 critical part of treating this pandemic. So herd immunity can be acquired both by a subclinical infection, which can provide an immunity by its own and a vaccine. So an herd immunity is provided by both a vaccine and a subclinical infection. So what it does is, when no one is immunized, the contagious disease spreads through the population. While some, if some of the people are immunized, the contagion splits a little slowly. When everyone gets immunized, the contagion spread is actively stopped. So this can be brought out only by active vaccination. So let's go in little, little in depth about this. A few of you might have heard that UK actually hoped for a part of the population to get a subclinical uh, infection and consequently develop a protective herd immunity. But what happened in the UK was it developed an insufficient herd immunity. Only a vaccine can provide a completely protective herd immunity. So now, well, now what is our plan of action? First, we wait for three to four months, practice our social distancing, and we hope that we develop a sufficiently protective but an incomplete herd immunity secondary to a subclinical infection. Now, this slows down the disease, thereby flattening the curve. Now, next, what happens? We develop vaccines. So, developing a vaccine can take anywhere between 18 to 24 months. Now we, it has to go into manufacturing and then it has to be uh, given to all the people. That would take 24 to 48 months. Now we have to develop the drugs side by side. This is to be prepared for a future pandemic, not for this pandemic. So the fastest recovery time would be around 3 to 4 months until we develop an incomplete herd immunity. However, the complete recovery can take up to 3 to 4 years for us to be prepared for the next pandemic. Considering that the corona is a novel virus, all of this is just a hypothesis that can be thrown out of the window even tomorrow. Thank you for your time.